So this episode we are continuing on with the turbo manifold. The clips that follow this one start off what looks like in the middle of a sentence, um, which is possible. I just don't know where the other clips have gone, so sorry for that. But let's get into making this manifold. It's a new morning, so I can grind this guy down. So I've ground down that flange, and it turns out I've made a large mistake. So if you look at this flange here, and you look at that one there, they might look the same. And I sort of thought they were symmetrical, and that fits on nicely. But this is supposed to be this way. And then it doesn't fit on nicely. At all. Crap. So I have cut off the end bolt holes. I'll fix that later. So now this will fit that way. Clears the hole and it will fit that way. So now I should be able to bolt it on and I can deal with that later. That's super annoying. But I was going to get this faced anyway, so if I weld stuff on here, um, I can get it faced and it's not going to matter too much. It's just more work. Well, now it fits like it should have the first time. There's actually a lot more room around it than I thought there was going to be. So I might end up running the exhaust over the top of the manifold and then down through that hole there. There's a lot of room. Sweet. Now for the next step. What can we remove from this back corner to get a turbo in place? So airbox can go, a lot of the wiring's probably gonna have to get moved. A bunch of these hoses were temporary anyway, uh, like six months ago when I did this the first time. So I'm gonna have to move a lot of that. So I'll just start pulling things apart and see where we can get to. Jackson's out there with the tripod and hyperlapse. So I'll just get this done right now. So the turbo I have chosen to run on this Camry for now is the Max Speeding Rods 3582 or 34, whichever one it is. Um, the main reason of this is because I already have it and it is roughly the right size. It's probably a bit too big. If anyone would like to send me a G25 550 or 650, hit me up on Instagram and you can send that my way, no worries. So a bit of a funny story. This is not really where I wanted this turbo. I wanted it facing sort of this way, um, like this bit at the front, coming this way, so I could run it straight out the headlight hole if I went to the drags or whatever. But it fits really well back there. I don't. Ha I've removed the airbox and a few bits and pieces, but most of that could go straight back in. I haven't moved anything back where the turbo is actually sitting. And as it is, if I had the current manifold and put two 90 degrees on it like pretty much straight up we're done um, and there's enough room for the exhaust to come across the back of the engine and out of there and go wherever I want really um, but I could run it like through here and there's a fair bit of room there so I might just do that because it's really easy the only issue would be maybe the drain, but that's actually not that bad. And the oil feed, which needs to come from that back corner anyway, can just run across the back of the motor and in. So that's that's actually really easy. Uh, I think I might just do that. And then I can clock the turbo so that this, instead of going towards the back, comes under the bottom and comes this way. And then I can run it into the intercooler and the intercooler back into the throttle. And then... For the filter, you can just come out of there at a 90 and either run it back into the stock airbox, which would be kind of hilarious, or a 90 and then straight out the headlight like I hoped. So that's probably the most simple solution, I think. It's certainly the most simple solution for the exhaust anyway. So it's quite difficult to hold all of this with one hand, but if I get a larger bend 90 and put it on there, on a bit of an angle, I can fix the angle up here. And then if I cut this one back to the yellow line there, we'll get roughly two in the right, in the same line, because we want the flange to sit that way and about in the middle of the two. So I think that'll be the best way to do it. So you end up with, from this angle, one slightly on the wonk like that, and this one probably slightly on the wonk the other way. But they'll be here and here, so you end up with 
two pipes coming up and then that's roughly the same size as the flange. So I'm going to cut this one back that far and then try and tuck this together. It's going to be MIG tacked and I'll deal with the TIG later and I'll have to fix these um, manifold bolts later as well but the turbo sits in a really cool spot. Um, not really where I wanted but I looked at all the other options and it's definitely the best one. So let's cut this up. So it's been a bit of a minute. I've cut these, this one back, put a 90 on it, put a 90 on this one, extension, and then cut it all flat with the bandsaw. And then I've got some more bends, which I have also cut down. So these will go on there, like that. And then I cut this way, which was actually quite tricky, end up with this nice shape here. And then if I grab the gasket, we can actually fit that on there quite well and that squares us up with the manifold it's actually coming across but coming along pretty well so the plan now is i've copied all of that i can't find it all of that onto here so i need to cut that out then i can weld that on there and then weld all this together well this took 47 years and I've made so much mess. But now this flange is cut and diagrammed into shape. It's not welded obviously, but that's pretty reasonable. It all matches up quite nicely. So once this is all welded, I'll send it to the um, machine shop and get this faced and get this faced. Everything will be nice and flat and good to go. So I'll just MIG tacked this together just for now, and then I'm gonna put it all on the car and see how the turbo fits. So it took a few attempts, but there's a turbo mounted. So it's currently just tacked together and the manifold is not particularly well tacked because there's still a bit of play in the turbo. But if I pull that all the way forwards and weld it there, it's good to go. Clears the strut bar, clears the bonnet, everything sort of works so it's a bit wonky both this way and this way but it doesn't really matter because it's still gonna go fast hopefully so next thing I'll do is pull that manifold out again tack the rest of it until I get the TIG gas and then I can start making an exhaust pretty cool so I have once again taken the manifold off and I was happy with it yesterday, and now I've decided I'm not happy with it. So the placement is right, if that makes sense. But see how this isn't square with the flange? I want to square that up. And then it's also not square that way. So I'd like to try and square that up as well. So I'm going to have a go, see how we go, basically. And if I can lower it a little bit more, I will. So I'll just have a play with this and see how far I can get. Okay, so I've rejigged the manifold and now the turbo is actually straight or very, very close to. And it is straight and square this way as well, as far as I can tell. So I'm much happier with that placement. It's obviously just a tiny little bit different to what it was, but I'm much happier with that because it now sits a lot better. It's incredibly close to that strut bar, as you can tell, it's probably like 10 mil. But if this engine does move, it should move backwards. So we should be fine. We are just sitting on this heater line down the back here. But I can move that or whatever. And then we also came over just a little bit more so that this can now clear everything. So hopefully that's a whole lot better. So a four inch bend off of here, down the front. And then for the exhaust, do a long piece of straight across the back and then 90 straight down just before the clutch master should get us past the manifold and then that two inch or whatever it is two and a half can come like 45 off at the turbo come down towards the front here sweet i'm much happier with that i'd just like to interrupt this video to let you guys know the merch store is finally up and proper we have all of the stuff we have air fresheners with the K10 on it. We have lanyards, plenty. We have so many lanyards with the original El Jefe Shop Shop logo. We have hoodies like this one. We have a few different Corolla shirts and we have 
the basic t-shirt as well in long and short sleeve. And if you're a sticker guy, there's a bunch of different options. So head over to the merch store in the description and grab yourself something cool. Let's get back to the video. So I definitely got distracted, but I have been given some stainless pipe, four inch and three inch, and I've just quickly cut it very roughly. This one needs to be a little bit shorter um, height-wise. I just left as much on there as I could. But that's pretty much what I'm going for with the exhaust. And then the intake will be like that. Big filter over here somewhere. And that's, that's it. We've got to do intercool pipes, obviously. But that's pretty much where the turbo is going to sit. Pretty much where the exhaust is going to run and all that sort of stuff. So pretty stoked with that. So I've finally gotten TIG gas for the welder. So I'm going to pull all this back apart and finish welding that manifold and then I can come back, put all this back together and start going with the exhaust and then I'll start doing the intake and then I'll have to work out how to alley weld and do the intake all the pipes. So it's all coming along but it all has to come apart. So whilst I'm returning all of this to stock, I've got the manifold out, got more TIG gas this morning. So now I need to fix these bolt holes. It's not a great way of doing it but I'll make it work and then I need to make this not a huge gap because I've got some more pipe can make all that work but I need to weld it all together first so I'm just going to play with the TIG for a while and get this happen. I don't know what was going on, but I ended up fighting this thing. So you can see there's the welds here from the little extended bolt hole. They're going to have to get um, faced and I have to cut them to shape, which is fine. I expected that, same here. Then these ones, a couple of them did really well and a couple of them just went to absolute garbage. So I think I've got everything. I'm going to have to hit it with a die grinder in a bunch of spots because there's some real trash. And then once that's all cleaned up, I guess I try and like pressure test it or something see if I've got any leaks but overall it's not it's not horrible I just wish it was better really um, you're never gonna see it obviously but I just like to try and do what I can so that's gonna have to do for now and then tomorrow I'll come out here and die grind and fix it all up and then clean all these edges and then I'll send it off to get faced and then it can go back in the car in a few days when that's all done the new morning the bench is full of things again. It's time to trim the bolt holes. And then I can clean up all of the insides of these pipes and the outsides of these pipes. So I want to make sure like five times over that these are in the correct spots because I don't want to deal with that again. But I think we're pretty good because everything lined up. So I'll get into that, cut these to shape, and then I can get them faced once it's all finished. Okay, so we've got everything back together. So I've gone through and cleaned up the edges of the flange. I've ground out and around the bolt holes so they're nice and smooth now. I'll come out this side. So they're all fixed up. So now I need to get the flange faced and then they'll be nice and flat and it will take off all of the extra weld and extra material on the corners where I've added those bolt holes back in. I went through here again and die ground all of these nice and smooth. Then I have die ground in here, but I'll have to show you that in a minute. So now what I wanna do is I've bolted the servo on. It's only a bit loose, but I can get this much play. So if I put it to one whole extreme, get the exhaust as close as I can to that manifold, then I want to weld this onto the flange, and then I can, when I get it in the car, I can adjust 
where it actually lands but that's as tight as it can be which is what I want to do so I'll tack this take it all apart again show you in here and then I'll weld this on the bench now with that turbo out of the way you can see the port match in there it's a bit nicer everything's sort of smoothed off and then if you get the gasket I tried to match the size of the gasket to the opening as well and overall pretty happy with that it's nice and smooth and I've taken out all of the lips I can feel everywhere so that it should all flow nicely. So I had a bit of extra time and I've made a couple of O2 bungs. They are slightly different widths and stuff, but it doesn't really matter. So the current setup has two different O2 bungs. I don't know if I need two when I go to the link, but we shall see. So I've made those up ready to go on the exhaust. So this morning I sent off the manifold to get faced. Um, unfortunately that's quite an expensive process, but it would have been more expensive to cut it off, get a new flange and re-weld it than it would have to just get it faced. So it's about $250 and they're going to face the head flange for me and then the turbo flange they're just going to put on the sander and try and get it pretty good because the gaskets do take up a little bit of uh, discrepancy, but not enough to <laughs> make up for the welds and the extra tabs that I had to weld on there. But I want to show you the exhaust I welded and show you what the next step is. So I mentioned that I was going to weld this stainless pipe to the mild steel flange. So I did dig that yesterday. Um, it's not amazing, but I think it's pretty reasonable considering I've not done a whole lot of welding yet. And then I also have this section which is going to get joined to there with another join. And I have welded in the O2 bungs that I made. And I also welded a small hole shut. So I'll be able to grind that down um, as I need to. So that's as far as I can get with the exhaust for now, but I need to get one more part this afternoon and then I've got some flanges coming and I'll be able to make the rest of the exhaust once I get the manifold back. But that'll have to wait till the next video on this turbo install. I know it has been a bit of a drawn out process, but it is a long process for me um, and it is taking a lot of time and I don't have a lot of free time at the moment. So I have to break it up, otherwise I'm not gonna get it done. So the next turbo episode, you'll see the exhaust, you'll see the face manifold, you'll see it all go back together in the car. I'm gonna try my best and get the oil feed and drain hooked up. I'll get the intake on and I won't worry about the intercool pipes for now, but I'll get everything like plumbed up and then we can start the car with no boost, but with the turbo spinning and all that sort of stuff. And at least it'll look like progress. And then we'll have to do the intercooler pipes and intercooler later. So that'll have to do for this week. I think the turbo kit is coming together quite well. Maybe it's not. Let me know in the comments. But thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week for another turbo episode.